Jones, welcome in. Seven Rivers Racing, KQEG-TV. Kind of a quiet studio, kind of a quiet essence around Western Wisconsin when it comes to racing. But it all culminates here in just a few weeks with Oktoberfest Race Weekend at the Lacrosse Fairground Speedway and at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway, their fall festival, one week after Oktoberfest. I'm Dan Dyke. Thanks for joining us on the program as we did last week. And what we're going to do this week is I've got some Oktoberfest things I want to pass along to you, then segments two and three. Kind of a flashback to some shows we've had in the years past as we let some drivers tinker in the garage and take a break from doing TV and some racing here as they set their sights on the fall festivals and the short track nationals at the Rockford Speedway here. And uh, I think that's next weekend, as a matter of fact. And we're going to bring you some more history that we've brought to you with Dale Danielski on the program over the past couple of years years featuring some fantastic video from Oktoberfest starting in 1971 all the way through what you're about to see here in the next couple of weekends. We'll run down the schedule here on this portion of the program and to get you all ready. Did want to pass along an interesting note here uh, for some folks that uh, didn't get a chance to see this on the OktoberfestRaceWeekend.com website or the Lacrosse Fairground Speedway website. And it's an inaugural funding campaign, including the 45th annual Oktoberfest race weekend at lacrosse. The Short Track Racing Network, a uh, company dedicated to the promotion of short track racing in the United States, not just locally wise, has launched FundMyRacing.com. It's a tool for tracks and drivers and the series to uh, kind of crowdsource event sponsorship, crowdsource being a brand new term here in 2014. Uh, much like other uh, sites, uh, fund racing, uh, FundMyRacing.com campaigns allow for different levels of support set up on the track or the driver. Campaign creators can choose, that is, from uh, how much or little they want to receive per donation and assign rewards based on levels that they've set. So it's a, a fundraising for the tracks, the series, and or our particular race team. Uh, the, can, this program kind of got simplified this year, uh, and it's being supported by Oktoberfest Race Weekend promoter Greg McCarns. McCarns says it's a great program that allows everyone in the industry to give back to the race teams. Uh, he says that uh, Short Track's uh, known industry-wide as a leader in short track marketing and design, and continues to unveil new short track related websites into the fall of 2014. A slate of additional site launches will be announced in the next coming weeks. So it allows tracks to continue to work on promoting their event, aka the Oktoberfest Race Weekend, and not get bogged down collecting donations or keeping track of lap awards. Uh, this website, FundMyRacing.com, does all the work providing a complete list of money at the end of the campaign. So if you want more information about this, uh, this fundraising program, I would encourage you to do so because I know the Lacrosse Speedway is backing this. Uh, it's brought to you by the Short Track Racing Networks, and the website, again, is fundmyracing.com. And, of course, if you need more information, uh, check out the Lacrosse Speedway website or oktoberfestraceweekend.com, or just contact the Speedway, and they'll give you more information on uh, that great new program. So getting you ready for Oktoberfest Race Weekend, if you haven't got the collector's newspaper yet that's been out, uh, the official fan guide, which you can also download at oktoberfestraceweekend.com. Uh, this is going to be a big year, 45 years now, 500 cars, 700 laps of feature racing. We've upped it from 600 from last year. 19 different divisions will be represented and 10 champions will be crowned by Sunday of Oktoberfest. Locally wise, we have our lay models, our sportsmen, Thunderstocks and the Outlaws. And then we're also gonna be crowning the Hornet champion and then the, uh, the other divisions like the Novelty. We've also got the um, figure eights, all the Bud Dash awards, of course, have already been given away. And uh, lacrosse-wise, we've got some close battles coming up. Things will start with Thursday, October 2nd. You're going to see the Super Late Models in the Futures race. Um, the, the details on that, under 30, have not participated in the big Oktoberfest 100, which is a 200 this year. Uh, lacrosse Late Models and Sportsmen, they're going to be crowned on the Thursday night of Fest. Thunderstocks Hornets uh, are going to be crowned as well. The Bandits will come in to run the race like they normally do at Oktoberfest. A lot of those guys from Wisconsin Dells area. 
And then the Outlaws Championship will be crowned as well between Wayne Smith and Cole Shosey. And you've got the world famous Double O Race, which any competitor can get into. They uh, take a lap on the action track quarter mile, then they go back out on the 5 eighths mile. It's really kind of a cool race to, to announce. And I'm sure uh, being a competitor in any division, you can go out there and have a great time doing that as well. Uh, everything starts Thursday morning, October 2nd, with a registration at 8.30. Qualifying is at 3 2 on 25. Uh, October 5th racing starts at 6. And yes, for you Packers Vikings fans, the game will be shown at 7.30 in the exhibition hall. To Friday we go. You're going to see Super Late Models, the Dick Trickle 99. Uh, that is uh, drivers from 15 different tracks and associations getting in on that segmented race. You've also got the Great Northern Sportsman Series. They're going to crown their champion. Second year, they've been at Oktoberfest. And then, of course, the Midwest Trucks being led by all kinds of drivers from throughout the state. Of course, you're familiar with the Wood family coming out of the Sun Prairie area. 8 o'clock Friday morning, October 3rd, registration will open. Uh, qualifying is at 225 on Friday with the Oktoberfest racing starting at 5. And of course, in the exhibition hall, it's the Altered Vision Band. They'll be performing from 930 until 1. Saturday, October 4th, it's going to be a big day. You've got Super Late Models, the Arca Midwest Tour cars start pulling in. Uh, we've got Big 8 Late Model Series, Midwest Dash cars, and the Mid-American Stock cars. Qualifying will begin at 205. Racing begins at 5. The Jared Blake Band performs from 9.30 to 1. Of course, Jared Blake uh, made the top 16 of Blake Shelton's show, The Voice. He also has a hit single called Country Fight out there. And then Sunday... Everything comes around. You start with the charity pancake breakfast. Uh, the champions reunion starts. Those are past track champions from pretty much anywhere, but they haven't been able to race the past three years. That'll start at 11, and you can get a hold of Dale Danielski to either get into that if you're a former track champion that hasn't raced over the past three years, or that you just want to go. Uh, registration will start at 8 o'clock Sunday morning. The Oktoberfest racing begins at noon. And a reminder this year, folks, the Oktoberfest big race is 200 laps. So someone's going to get crowned the Oktoberfest overall champion uh, once that gets underway right there. And again, the websites you want to go to, OktoberfestRaceWeekend.com or LacrosseSpeedway.com. Now, the details of the Mississippi Thunder Speedways fall fast, being run October 10th and 11th. Uh, those details are still being hammered out. They did move it back a week this year because all the lacrosse fans and race car drivers that want one more weekend of racing can do so in Fountain City at the dirt track. Uh, keep your eyes locked and loaded to either one of my racing Facebooks or MississippiThunder.com as the fall schedule will be coming up for the fall fest. Yes, they're going to run Hornets this year. It's going to be two days. Uh, Pure Stocks, I know they've got some other stock classes in there, USRA B mods, the mini mods, the um, Pure Stocks. I mean, the whole classes are going to be there running a two-day format. Again, MississippiThunder.com. For the rest of the show, we're going to kind of take you back a little bit with Dale Danielski, show you some of the history of racing in western Wisconsin and Oktoberfest right here on Seven Rivers Racing. Get ready for the Thunder. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Your Friday night racing destination. Every Friday night. Super Stocks, Modified. 600 Mods. Pure Stocks, Street Stocks, B-Mods. It's racing excitement, dirt track stock. Tickets $12 for adults, $10 for seniors. Students free with an ID. And this year, kids 17 and under free with an adult admission. Friday night racing starts at 7. Bring on the Thunder. Dirt track style at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Highway 35 just north of Fountain City. Some of the best moments in life happen at home. American Standard Heating and Air works smarter to make them all more comfortable. For a limited time, save over $600 on select American Standard systems. Call now for details. Holman American Legion Post 284. It's all about veterans' rights, quality of life. The Legion belongs to the veterans it serves. The American Legion supports Holman High School sports and local NASCAR racing. Did you know the Legion is open to the public? Stop by for a cold one. Tuesday lunch is a home-cooked meal. Supper is Buck Burgers. Thursday, it's tacos. They can be the place for your wedding reception or meeting. Holman American Legion. It's for veterans and for the people of Holman. At Cousin Subs, we never settle for good. We always strive for better. Since 1972, we've been creating our signature Deli Fresh Subs. We start with fresh bread that's baked every day. 
Then we freshly chop vegetables and slice the meat daily. It's how we do it and always have. Why? Because you deserve better. We are back, Seven Rivers Racing, KQE GTV. We want to take a moment to thank all the sponsors of the program and you and the viewers for watching the program, not only on KQE GTV, uh, also on the internet live on Thursdays and then uh, Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays on the TV, but also the folks that uh, can't wait to watch it on YouTube. We've had thousands and thousands of views and hits from all over the country, and uh, we greatly appreciate that as the works are in the works for your number five's show coming up next year. So uh, again, as we were talking, the Cross Fairgrounds Speedway, the cleanup continues from the Trailer Race of Destruction, and uh, Friday night, September 12th, will be Street Drags, the final Street Drag of the year will be October 11th, and that will be a 1 o'clock start, 300-foot bracket nationals. The big trophies come out. Everyone gets pumpkins, and it's just a great afternoon. Weather-wise, the past two years, it's been simply fantastic. And again, if you want more information, it's streetdragslax.com. And if you want more information on the four days, actually, it's almost a week long because when Oktoberfest race weekend starts at the Speedway, the Camping Village opens on the Monday. That's when you can start pulling your, uh, the parade of haulers is what they like to call it. And then uh, some of the campfires start going Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And then by the time we go to Thursday, that's when all the activity starts. Uh, just to let you know, Mississippi Thunder Speedway, third annual Bayman B-Mod Nationals. What a weekend that was. Three nights of racing. And got to congratulate Travis Sauer. He was the 2012 B-Mod National $10,000 champ. He walked away with the big money and trophies and the cash at the end of Thursdays and Saturdays be mod nationals. It was Scotty Bentz, King of the Dirt. Uh, he walked away with the big race on Friday night. And Jason Crone, unstoppable. USRA Modifieds run as well. He won the $1,000 Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. He won all three features on the weekend. Racing resumes October 11th, uh, actually the 10th and 11th with the 6th Annual Fall Festival at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Uh, we're going to have the Midwest Mini Mods all also on the uh, third mile will be the opening ceremonies and then USRA Modifieds, Wissota Super Stocks. Uh, also all USRA B Mods, the Wissota Midwest Mods, huge class coming. Wissota Street Stocks, 600 Mods, MTS Pier Stocks and Flyers. Uh, for Fall Fest this year moved a week behind uh, the Oktoberfest Race Week in La Crosse. So you get racing huge uh, two weekends in a row. You can check that out at MississippiThunder.com. Going to do some history coming up next in the program. Get you ready for Oktoberfest right here on Seven Rivers Racing. We're here when the sun rises. And when the bread rises too. And we're here slicing a deli fresh every day. And every morning, we're chopping it all up. Why do we put so much effort into making it fresh? Because you deserve better. Holman American Legion Post 284. It's all about veterans' rights, quality of life. The Legion belongs to the veterans it serves. The American Legion supports Holman High School sports and local NASCAR racing. Did you know the Legion is open to the public? Stop by for a cold one. Tuesday lunch is a home-cooked meal. Supper is Buck Burgers. Thursday, it's tacos. They can be the place for your wedding reception or meeting. Holman American Legion. It's for veterans and for the people of Holman. moments in life happen at home. American Standard Heating and Air works smarter to make them all more comfortable. For a limited time, save over $600 on select American Standard systems. Call now for details. Get ready for the thunder. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Your Friday night racing destination. Every Friday night. Super stocks, modified. 600 mods. Pure stocks, street stocks, B-mods. It's racing excitement, dirt track stock. Tickets $12 for adults, 10 for seniors. Students free with an ID. And this year, kids 17 and under free with an adult admission. Friday night racing starts at 7. Bring on the thunder. Dirt track style at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Highway 35 just north of Fountain City. 
right into this thing. It started way back in 1970. We're in the 42nd season of Oktoberfest racing, and you brought along a lot of footage again. Let's kind of jump right into things and let you set things up as to where did Oktoberfest racing come, in, come from? Well, and again, some, uh, some history is in order here, I guess, to really see how this event has become what it has. And, uh, and again, it had to start on the dirt, actually. Uh, uh, the very first racing in 1957 occurred on dirt. Uh, and uh, we have some footage of that. We're not seeing that here. This is actually the track at North Lacrosse. Uh, which actually uh, had the very first Oktoberfest event. And uh, uh, again, I, like I say, 1957 is when the track opened for dirt, but it was in the early 60s when things really started to go with the pavement, as you can see here at North Lacrosse Speedway. Uh, and of course, it was a cleaner form of racing. And really, the way it was sold, every event was special. That's the way they were promoted. So you didn't really have an event of the, the stature of an Oktoberfest because every event was con considered special. Right. Thrills and spills, the whole bit. And so before Oktoberfest was really even thought about, you had a lot of these other events at different tracks, uh, and this happens to be uh, the first one back in 1970. This is at the third this, round. This is, okay. this is the first Oktoberfest. And uh, Larry Wears uh, was behind the effort. Uh, they had paved the track earlier in the year, and they decided after the uh, the Rockford Speedway had been running a, their huge national short track championship. That was really the first national in scope event, and I think a lot of these promoters were looking at that and saying, "Hey, we can do that. You know, we can put on a big show. The fans will love it. We'll get drivers from everywhere." And that's what happened with the the very first one in 1970, which uh, which was won by uh, Tom Raffner, a uh, pretty well named. A uh, well-known name through the years, right, right, and uh, and that's really where it began, and it's just gotten bigger every year. Boy, look at the styles of those cars! Isn't that amazing how they've developed over the years? Yeah, it's uh, you know it was pretty much a stock car. You were selling stock car racing mm -hmm. to the public, a and they were. Lex out there, a couple <laughs> of Chevys, a lot of Chevys. Everything, there, right? every brand name, and, and this is back when you had <laughs> a lot of them. You know, you didn't have three major manufacturers. You know, you had pretty much uh, it ran the gamut: Mercury's, Ford's, you say Cadillac, uh, Chevrolet. Uh, you know, it's Edsel's. I mean, <laughs> it's just guys would get these cars out of the literally out of the the junkyard the parts and start from the ground up uh, right off their uh, garage floor and you'd have a race car you know within a week and go race and you could and you could be competitive now Oktoberfest kind of came around on the heels of the uh, the national short track championships which will be coming up at the uh, that we just had here at the end of uh, September early October um, down in Rockford this this kind of did this stem from those championships yes and, it, and again that was the first event that really attracted national attention. Uh, the, the Deary family, as a matter of fact, Hugh Deary, uh, of course Chuck Deary being the, uh, the manager, manager out at uh, West Salem, Lacrosse Fairgrounds, uh, that family began that event and they held it for many, many years. Uh, Hugh passed on, but tradition continues and they still hold that event every year and again, that was the first big one. And of course, um, look, Dick Trickle, First ever winner? Was it Dick or was it Walbeck? Actually, the National Short Track Championship, the very first winner was Dick Trickle. Marlon Walbeck won the second year. And uh, there's a long list of guys that have won that, as, as there is for uh, Oktoberfest now. And then you kind of went from Rockford to uh, the Golden Sand Speedway. Actually, uh, and again, that was one of those tracks that was built in the 60s and started to have some big events, you know, had more guys racing there. It was a high bank third mile track, so it had a lot of speed. It was a big attraction. And again, that's uh, uh, a, a track that held these events. And, and I think, again, people were looking at this saying, hey, you know, we need to do something special. Every event is special, but at the same time, we're gonna put a bunch of money on uh, the line for a, a purse payout to these drivers. And, uh, and again, that was another one that started to do that. Uh, a track north of here, Black River Falls, was one that, uh, again, in the early 60s, uh, got racing going and uh, on the pavement. And that was uh, getting more and more people involved. 
And uh, so that really the pavement is what, what created a lot of the interest, I think, cleaner form of racing. And uh, that happens to be Joe Shear uh, hitting the wall there. <laughs> it was not a good day for him. But uh, I, I'm noticing some of the numbers here. Of course, it's easy to pick out the 99 of Dick Trickle. But I also noticed uh, number 711 and how back then there was a little more uh, uh, leeway on what kind of number you could have. I remember watching a race out there with somebody who had the pie symbol on the side of his car. You don't see that anymore. That's pretty amazing. Uh, and, and this happens to be 1971 footage here. And Dick Trickle did win the, the second Oktoberfest that was ever held at the fairgrounds. And yes, 7-Eleven, John Brevik. Uh, you had a lot of different numbers. Uh, letters spelling out words or, or terms or mm -hmm. s practically sentences. It was really unique, you know, a lot of times the what these guys would come up mm -hmm. with. Sure. Actually, uh, uh, there were a number of multi-winners of the fest, and 1972 began the year of the most prolific, actually. Joe Shear uh, won the 1972 race, the late Joe Shear. He passed away uh, sometime in the 90s, but uh, that's the footage we're seeing here, and uh, that was Joe's first win. He went on to win five of these. Unprecedented. Wow. Nobody has ever like done that. Bullseye in your back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think had he not uh, lost his life due to cancer, he probably had a couple more wins in him. You know, he was still racing right up to the end. And uh, But, yeah, that was uh, the year he won. And uh, then we evolved into 1973. Uh, we've got some of that footage here as well, and uh, there was some controversy in that race. Actually, Marv Marzovka, another well-known name from the past, right. uh, raced uh, and won often at the at the fairgrounds. Uh, he was not given the checkered flag initially at that event. There were two others, actually, uh, Rich Summers being one and Billy Ose, a Minnesota driver, uh, that were given, uh, well, it was thought to be first and second position. And, of course, Marv was saying, no way, you know, I won this race. And it was a little, a little while later that uh, it was determined that he did. And uh, that was his uh, uh, only win. And that's what the footage is here. Actually, this was 1973. Uh, and again, the, the event just kept growing. Uh, for, for the most part, it went from a one-day event to two, and now I guess, uh, well, here a number of years later, it's up to four. Right. So it's just every year, I think, it's produced uh, more excitement. And, and, and if, if you notice the, the footage here, there's an outside retaining wall now. Did they build this wall in between 72 and 73? Well, it's a little bit subtle, I guess, when you watch some of this footage as to the changes that did take place. I mean, it started in 1957 on the dirt as a, just a, a fence around it, right. little or no barrier. So, yeah, I believe that it did evolve to where they, they put walls in. Uh, I think they still had guardrail on the inside. Of course, that changed later on, too. But, yes, that was one of the changes that took place. Some of the other names we're looking at, Dick Trickle, two-time winner, Eddie Hoffman, three-time winner, uh, Danny Fredrickson, three-time winner, won it uh, last year, and of course he's going to come out um, with a bullseye in his back as well. And in, I want to throw in real quickly here, if you look at those names of some of the, the Dick Trickles and uh, um, the Sauters that we've talked about, I do want to mention real quickly that we have a Champions Reunion, which is held during Oktoberfest. And now out of all this footage we see here, on, on, and you've done such a fantastic job of compiling these, a lot of these guys that were racing back then are anticipated to show up in lacrosse, whether they're just watching the races, as you see a nice spin out right there, um, or they're at the reunion. Yes, as a matter of fact, this is the third year that we've put on what we call Champions Reunion, and the, it is open to any drivers that are past champions. Uh, in any series, any division of racing, uh, any racetrack, <coughs> excuse me, any racetrack, and basically uh, if they haven't raced for three years, they can come to this reunion and uh, we'll just have some fun. Basically we'll feed them and there'll be some drink there and we'll recognize them in some way who they are and uh, now do you, uh, have some fun. Do you ever see like out of the footage we're seeing here, you might see a an accident or a race win that you hear the drivers go, you remember back in 1975 when so-and-so, I mean, you we're watching the footage of maybe some of the stories that they're going to be talking about. Oh, ab absolutely. And, you know, amazingly, some of these guys, uh, yeah, they, they don't have short memories when it comes to those kind of things. <laughs> and, they will bring it up. And, of course, the fans are invited to come over and listen to these stories, correct? Yes. If you have a wristband for any of the days of the weekend uh, and a 
especially Sunday, if you have a Sunday band, uh, grandstand admission, you will be allowed to come in and mix and mingle with these guys. And Take a picture. Yes, yes, we encourage it. Now, uh, that's if, what we want. If you look at the footage here, I'm, lo I'm noticing a lot of uh, a lot of Camaro type bodies. Was was that starting to be? As Oktoberfest races were coming along, was that starting to be uh, one of the hotter cars, the, the Camaros and the and the um, uh, and, and you know like the Firebirds and whatnot? Well, actually, what transpired in 1972 was the downsizing of of the cars. The wheelbase went from 112 or even longer to 108 inch. And that's why you see Camaros, Mustangs, they went to a narrower tire. It, uh, we do have uh, the footage right here, and I have to thank Jim Carlson for this. Uh, he, he shot it. This is of the first two years, we believe, that the, this track existed, 1957, the first events they ever had. And yeah, talk about evolution. Look at these cars. Wow. I mean, and look at, that is West Salem. That is the fairgrounds. So I mean, it's hard to people. even recognize that. Look and at and that's why I, lo I love the history part of this thing because I've been out there for, I think, seven years now, and I can't envision any of this being at, at West Salem right now. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and it, uh, lo it looks like the same track layout. Maybe the banking is a little different, but it looks like the corners and everything are still located in the same spot. I, you know, it was considered a half mile then with, uh, who knows, with the way things are measured, you never sure. know. Right. But I think it is. I think mm -hmm. that, that original layout, uh, it's all still very close. So sure that's the footage like from uh, those first days. And uh, IMCA sanctioned it back then. So I guess already, you know, again, the special event, uh, they were considered the premier sanctioning body, and uh, that's who sanctioned the event. And no, was big name drivers came to it. I've watched a lot of this footage, though. I have frozen the past couple of years at Oktoberfest. Um, was this originally held in the beginning of October? Because I don't see a lot of folks out there that are dressed for what we've had to go through the past couple of years. No, actually, the only events held were during the fair. And of course, the fair today is still held in July. Right. And that's when these events were held. They've kind of maintained that same uh, fair uh, program and included racing. One of the things that just jumped out at me on this video about uh, 10 or 15 seconds ago was when they dropped the green flag, the flag man was on the track. <laughs> and remember how that it's used true. to be? They used to it's do true. that. And, 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 they, but, and they also stopped in the front straightaway and had a rolling start. And that's actually how uh, it was. I mean, they put, they'd risk life and limb. They put it all in line. There was no flag stand. No. Uh, Greg Oliver, I'm sure, is, is very <laughs> thankful of the way things are today. But in those days, that, that was as part, big a part of the, the show as the racing. Mm -hmm. You know, that flag man was putting on his own show. Oh, he was close to and those cars, too. I yeah. just noticed he was backing away. Yeah. Now, see, if you look at this shot right here, if you watch the grandstands, they all of a sudden come to a stop right there. Of course, lacrosse has extended those grandstands, which that would be probably... Uh, today by the restrooms, yeah. how it now extends from there all the way down into turn one. Yeah, it, it, I'm sure they've changed some things in that grandstand area. And actually, that we kind of backtracked on that last video a little bit. That was a, a track in Black River Falls that was holding a number of events back in the 60s. And then, of course, like we talked earlier, the Rockford National Short Track Championship was the biggest event, the first truly special event, and that's some of the footage you can see here of, uh, uh, this would, would have been the, uh, I believe the second one ever run there back in 67. And they've ran now so. for uh, 46 years as they just completed their uh, 46th annual Correct. Short Track and National Championships. Uh, Greg McCarms at the helms down there, and of course, uh, uh, we'll be seeing Greg uh, periodically pretty much throughout the entire uh, next four days here uh, in lacrosse. Now, you've got some shots we're going to show as well.